Welcome back to the shop. It's early Sunday morning. It's, it's still before 7 o'clock in the morning, so it's real quiet outside and it's real quiet inside. Um, yeah, seeing that I got a lack of days off, I'm uh, just really just trying to crunch any kind of work on, on the Cub, uh, whatever I can. So, um, I made a, I made a little tool. Let me show you what I'm up to here today. I'm going to try to get, I got about two hours worth of time I can put into it this morning. So, let's get started. Okay, here's what we're trying to do. We're trying to figure out how the whole, how the whole engine is mounted. Um, with, with regards, once again, to the angle on the, uh, uh, on the thrust line for this. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, it's early in the morning. All right, because we want to make sure that this is going to be 90 degrees to where the thrust line should be. And in accordance with the Piper Cub, the uh, horizontal stabilizer is set up so it, when you get that at zero degrees, this should be at 90 degrees to that zero degrees. And then with the, of course, with the angle uh, for thrust between right and left, um, we'll be having this set up where this is level. And then we're going to go back to that uh, to the contact point on the top of the vertical stabilizer up on top here. Now this part here has already been measured, and as much as I'd like to show you how I measured it, I just used I got this I got this balanced out. Let me make sure I don't reset this thing. I had this set up so that it was at zero degrees. So he's kind of dancing around is zero degrees and then I took the tape measure and then came to the to the end of this in the middle on both sides and then ran it up to this point here to where to where it crossed this little curvature here from where it was slanting up to where it was flat now on this side we were at uh, 58 and uh, 58 and three, let's just go 58 and three quarters because I, I converted to, uh, to decimal. Uh, but it was 58 and three quarters inches, and this side was 58 and a half inches. So it was an eighth inch longer on this side. So, and I haven't, I haven't figured out what the angle of that is. Um, I, I'll do it when it comes time to make the block. So I've already got the numbers written down over here on my little, it's not a cheat sheet, it's a cheat board. So it's facing the wrong way. So it is, instead of being, Pretty much tilted like that it's tilted like this just by a little bit but by an eighth of an inch from tip to tip so if you go ahead and take that tip to tip and run that back that's that's a pretty good little distance off so it's probably about that half a degree so on the back here when this was level and it's close enough you know it says zero degrees we're, we're, we're about it so then we come over to this side. Let's get out of that mode. I bumped modes. There we are. So we are point, point 0.1 degrees, and I figured that was close enough to get the measurement that we're looking for up front. Okay, then I come back, and because this hinge line is at 90 degrees to this level surface here, to the horizontal stabilizer, came in in 89.9 so anyway that's pretty darn near close to 90 degrees and then when I moved up front I rotated this so that this was vertical and we come in and we hook this up to it and lo and behold it's at 89.9 degrees just like it was back there so this has zero down um, which is what they had in pretty much in in real life, but I'm going to angle it down. So this is this was at 90 degrees. That was at 90 degrees. So the guy did a good job building the plane because this, you know, even though it should have been straight across um, for the uh, <laughs> vertically. So it, so anyway, um, the guy did a good job building a plane. When they mounted the motor, you can see the standoffs. It was parallel standoffs, so there was nothing worked into it. I can work off of the same pattern, but I've got to move everything anyway. So I'll end up just pulling everything off the front, and I'm going to take the measurements that I need right now 
of where it sits and then uh, I will start the base right there so this is going to have to get moved up in this way a little bit so um, so let me go ahead and I'll probably sorry about that I may just go ahead and get the uh, get the other Piper Cub down here because I want to get the measurement on the uh, on the other Piper Cub as to exactly how I've got that set up um, so I'll measure the Piper Cub the same exact way that you guys saw here I'll do it outside real quick and uh, then I'll just come on back in and uh, we'll figure out the angles and uh, start cutting a block all right on a little side note when I said I was going to uh, when I took the motor off I decided I wanted to open up the muffler to see what might be impeding flow I mean we already knew by looking inside that this where the screw came through there was an issue there that that was really impeding a lot of, of exhaust flow outside the hole itself I don't know if you'll be able to see it let's cut it down it really blocks off a whole lot let me get a little pokey thing a whole lot of what can be removed to get more flow through I mean we're probably three thirty seconds of an inch on the top and the bottom um, I mean that's that's huge that's you know that's pretty close to eighth of an inch on the bottom so I'm gonna come in I'll grind all this out um, so I, I can at least match the exhaust port here and then I'll probably come in and I'll cut this little piece off just have the three hole the three holes the three screws holding it together because this part down here where the exhaust is you've got the clamp so I'll use the clamp as a uh, positioning part down here on the bottom and I'll probably just put some some high temp uh, silicone um, you know sealant around the outside of that some because I've got some exhaust stuff so once it's all put together everything should be fine but that way I can increase the exhaust flow a little bit better here now what this is doing although you're still gonna have restriction coming out the tail which is good because you need that because it's the back pressure that gets popped back in through timing to give you a little bit more punch through the uh, so it increases your compression a little bit but with this gap where you really have let me see if I could take this off first All right, I figured I would show you the best way to uh, to see where where the problem is they didn't even use an exhaust gasket on this one they just used some silicone so that's probably how I'll put it back on but you can see the size difference in the exhaust there plus here so when you take this off and you flip it over what you're looking at here is all of the stuff I'm going to get this right one of these days this whole area let's bring it close enough this whole area up in here where it's dirty you can see the line so this is where the exhaust needs to come up to here and down here where you see the char on the bottom all that needs to be removed so that's that's pretty good constrictive flow so this before it gets put back together again this will get taken care of where I'll go ahead and uh, you know gr I'll grind this out here and I'll probably just come in with some uh, maybe some JB weld and fill that hole um, but with the three contact points up here and then this clamp down here holding it together I really don't think there's going to be an issue and it's uh, the exhaust system it leaked anyway so we'll be good we'll get that set up so yeah so I'll grind that out and then if I can find the other side it's around here somewhere um, the outer portion of this oh there it is um, I'll just go ahead and do the same thing I'll just epoxy this closed and then we're good to go if I wanted to I'd be able to come in and grind this out a little bit but I think just by getting rid of this because you can see how much you can see how much flow is restricted just from that piece in the way so once I get that out it'll it'll have a lot better exhaust on it so uh, hopefully that should give me a little more hours a little more performance out of the motor because I know that the motor I know the motor can do it um, because that one plane weighs about the same but that motor has a different muffler on it but it's got better exhaust flow and it really pulls well. Uh, what I'm working on right now is I'm putting together a new uh, motor mount and I'm going to show you how I'm going to go about doing this. What I'm doing is I'm replacing the two aluminum plates with the little spacers and what we're doing is I got the measurement on that it was three quarters of an inch so I just glued, uh, glued together two pieces of three eighths inch plywood. Um, so this is ready to go. Now what I did is I came around I made marks 
And as you can see, it, this fits quite well. Everything centered. <laughs> uh, the ones where they were originally made um, didn't go on super straight, and, and the, the holes didn't line up. So it's there was a lot of uh, you could tell by the screws that the guy used in these things. Um, I think he was probably fighting a little bit of side to side wander. I could probably go up to some. I don't know, probably five millimeter, maybe six millimeter screws, but I'm gonna stick with what they've got. You know, it worked in the past, it's gonna it's gonna work now. So what I'm doing is I'm getting this all set up. I'm trying to get I'm trying to get the oh, the bolts out of it. I'm trying to get this together. So this is all, as you can see, measured, drew lines, scribed them across, and uh, drilled the holes. And of course. There's an up arrow as to which way is up. <laughs> I just do it for, for whatever reason. Anyway, what I need to do now is I need to figure out the distance off of center, how much I need to shave off on the back. I'm gonna set up my little, my little block up on the desk with my little bench dog, and I'm just gonna use the plane. So I, I need to make marks on the side. So the marks will be drawn on the edge. So for the top being up, and it's going to be shaved off in this direction so that this side over here facing you will be thinner than this side here. I've got to measure off and it's going to be in thousands. I don't have to be exact, I just have to be close because you know it is wood. Um, but I'll make marks over here. So say that I had to come over 60,000. Say I had to shave off 60,000. I'll make a mark over here and then since I'm dropping two thousands, I'll come down and I'll make a mark over here for two thousands because this, this side over here is going to start off closer to, it's going to start off closer to the two thousands because the two thousands needs to be, this is a very confusing way to do it and to try to explain it to you what it is because you want two thousands of down and then to the right. So it's almost like you're trying to get two thousandths of down in the middle because you've got to get the, the, the full rotation to the, to the right. Okay, so what, what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to explain this to you the best I can with what I've got to do with this. Is that because, and this is from my perspective, not from your perspective. It needs to rotate in this direction. So for you guys, it's going to be like the right side is coming towards you. So if I was looking at the front of the plane, that's what it's going to do. So, but I'm looking at it from, from the pilot's perspective. So I need it to rotate in this direction and then also needs to rotate in this direction. So if you were, if you were building a plane by yourself and you needed to go ahead and get this to work down to the right, you would put two washers up behind this corner and usually one washer down by this corner on the bottom and that's going to give you that little bit of down rotation and over. Sometimes you can go ahead and put one washer up on the top on the back side here. So it would be two washers up on this side, one washer in this corner, one washer in this corner. So that way that's going to go ahead and give you the angle of attack on it. So what I'm going to have to do, so like I said, is I'm going to have to make measurements. And very carefully, which that's why it's pointing up, I'm going to mark these off. So hopefully when everything gets done and I've got the measurements figured out and where it needs to be, I'll bring it right back in, let you know, and then let me put it on the on the bench and just start shaving it off. All right, very confusing on how to get the measurements I was looking for for this little block of wood. Uh, to start with, this little pseudo prop was 16 inches from side to side. This is three and a half. So I took the 16, I took the three and a half and divided it by 16 to get the ratio. So then that was what I was going to need to step everything down. So what I ended up doing was, as far as this was off, in six, at, at 16 inches, I needed to reduce that down to the same size that it would be if it was if this was what I was measuring for the for the angle of degrees. So I took the I took the numbers I got from this, which I think was 0.375, which is what I measured on this to make sure that we had it going the right way. So I took that number and I divided it by the, the little ratio that I got from this and the number that it came up with 
I went back in and put that in divided by 3.5 inches and then found the arctan of that and then it came up to be exactly the same. So I knew I had the right number so the way I did it did work. I just had never done it that way before so, so you know, it's gold. So what I did was I came in and this is the point where it's going to stay exactly the way it was. Let's see how well I can do this. And possibly, I'm hoping you can see it as we go around. There's a little teeny line on this side. Alright, so that little line starts to get a little bit bigger. So this is where it's on a side. This, this over here is for that one and a half degrees. And then as we rotate this way, if I can keep it right, it gets a little bit wider until we're down here in this corner. That's the two degrees. And then as we sweep back across the bottom to the other side, up the other side towards the top, you'll see it, it drop down. So now we're back on the far corner where we came up from 2 degrees to 1.5 degrees and then this comes back up and then just blends back into nothing. So, um, yeah, that's how you do it. Now I'm just going to set this up and just start shaving until uh, I, I think it's pretty darn good. And then uh, once that's done, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it back on here and trace around the outside and get it down to the size I want because I've already so then it's ready to go then I just got to make the measurements across the front and I'll bring it back in for that too and how I figure out where this is going to come out up here where the prop comes through in the same exact location it was when it came through on that one now I don't know if I brought this up because as much as I'd like to redo the front of this if I really wanted to redo the front of this, I have, oh it's hiding down there somewhere, I have my original SIG cowl that came with the other one because what I did in the other one was I went to fiberglass specialties and got, uh, it was like a PA, PA11, I could be wrong but I think it was a PA11 cowling um, because the Creer brothers did that on there so I just wanted that plane to look like the Creers. So, if you want to check that out, I think it's K-R-I-E-R, -E Career, Career Brothers, and it's, it's a nice looking plane. So, that's kind of what I took the design from, and then once I got to that point with the design on the front, I just kind of, you know, fudged my way through and made it look the way I want it to look. So, so anyway, let me get this thing shaved out, and hopefully, you know, if I get it done tonight, good. If not, you know, I don't go into work till tomorrow until about 11 a.m., so I'll be back down here early in the morning to bring you all up to date as to where I'm at. See you in the morning. Welcome back to the shop everyone. I uh, spent about two hours this morning getting things somewhat cleaned up and uh, just to make some room because as soon as she's done the other one comes in. Anyway, bring you up to date on where I'm at. I've got the motor all properly remounted with the new uh, backing plate on it. And I'm going to have to re, uh, reset the cowling on it just because of the change. What it did is it moved it in about, I don't know, not much at all, maybe a sixteenth of an inch. So, and I wanted to kind of reset the cowling anyway. I didn't like the way it was sitting. So I'll come in, I'll make some new holes inside here and then kind of fill patch the other ones just to get it close. But first thing I got to do before I do anything on that is get this muffler reinstalled. Now the changes I made to the muffler because we had a we had it and I'm hoping earlier in the video I showed it we had a lot of uh, issues. This was blocked off. The hole that was in the muffler itself was different than the standoff. That that's it's a separate standoff. So what I did is I just went inside and just uh, you know caressed it. I uh, just wanted to make sure that the, the, the port, the cylinder port and the muffler port, the exhaust port, relatively matched. I mean, it is a two-stroke, so it, it'll help it flow better. Um, so I'm hoping, I'm hoping I took video of that because it's, I didn't take pictures. And then what I did is I came on the inside and cleaned everything out because I wanted to make sure, because it was, it was cast aluminum, it wasn't very clean on the inside. So, as you can see, there's still a little bit of, you can, you can see how the mold was made. Uh, and the same thing on this side, the way the mold was made. And you, you couldn't get all that out. I just want to get most of that out. So, 
it's not a huge it's not a huge uh, change in size but it's it's going to flow better than it did before so that should give me a little bit more horsepower and then the one option i had i was thinking about and i'm kind of i'm hoping you're going to be able to see this because I, I really don't think you will but i'm going to give it a shot and see if it works what i was planning on doing was on the screw holes that come through here I was planning on using JB Weld because this has to be clamped together anyway. But what I'm going to do, it's going to be hard for me to do this. Anyway, a screw can still go through there and you can see what it is. So if I can size it, so there's going to be a little bit, and you probably can't see it, but there's going to be a little bit of, let's see, yeah, I don't think you can see it. But there's going to be a little bit of a of misdirection of exhaust flow going past this. Um, I think I'm going to try this first, just because if, if it's going to be better than it was to begin with. But I want to just try it like this. That just way, as of right now, it makes it easier for me, and hopefully, I can have this thing fired up later on this afternoon, um, just to uh, just to test because it's always it's easy enough for me to take this off and then redo it. So anyway, let me get all this taken care of. I've got to go in. I've got to cut one gasket. I'm going to cut one gasket for right here and then the rest of this when it gets screwed together is going to use this some ultra gray it's uh it, it's designed for exhaust it can hand up to 500 uh, degrees fahrenheit so we'll be good there and this was just in case i decided i wanted to uh jb weld it because for some reason i've had jb weld um probably since I was a kid back in my teenage years and I've still been using the same tubes I don't use it that often but it works really nice um, I just don't know where it is so I had to go get some new stuff so so this will be good for another you know 30 plus years as well so so anyway all right let me get all this stuff taken care of and then uh, I'll, I'll bring you back in and uh, just to show you how everything is going to fit up and what I need to do to the uh, to the cowling all right, I got the cowling put back on and I just kind of wanted to prove it to myself and let you guys take a look at it on how my measurements that I took with my little measuring board and my little, wherever it is, the little tool I made uh, to figure out the offset. I just wanted to show you how accurate everything came out because I was kind of surprising myself because I knew I was going to have to move the cowling back. I'm going to show you why I got to move the cowling back. The cowling's got to come back because the motor is sitting in a little bit. Now, this would still work. Sorry about that. This would still work. I'm not going to hit the cowling with the propeller. It's just that I'm in about a sixteenth of an inch off. And even though that's fine, I mean, if I really wanted to, I, I could, I could leave it there. But I, I kind of want to, I kind of want to have this sit out about a sixteenth of an inch farther. So it's just a matter of sliding this in, redrilling new holes, and then uh, putting it, uh, you know, just pretty much reattaching it. And these these little holes here, I'm gonna uh, put epoxy inside of, and piece of tape on the outside. And just plug them for now. The paint, the yellow paint that I have, uh, is not the same color as this. I, I've got some yellow paint, but that's for something else. That's got to do with uh, anyway, diff different color yellow. All right. So anyway, here it is. We're all lined up. And we are still going down the center. We're really close. We're probably about a 64th of an inch off being on center. So everything came out very nice. This, as you can see, was not, it was not an accurately cut hole to begin with. So, uh, so I'm, I'm actually very happy with having this thing now pointing that way. So, and that's, so, so anyway, it came out good. I'm happy. So I'll just go ahead and, uh, um, just slide the cowling back a little bit, put the, uh, put the car back on, and then, uh, you know, we'll take it outside, fire it up, and test it. Alright, now that it's all back together, let's see if we can get her started.
the wrong button. better all right we're done runs good tomorrow uh we're gonna be heading up to the field we've got a little club picnic we're gonna have a uh full contact uh combat with uh flying wings any kind of other foamies people want to get involved with i've done it before in the past indoors and uh, I've got a little flying wing that shows the battle damage. Most of it, luckily, is on the leading edge. So I won a lot of uh, a lot of internal battles. So um, I've got a little video camera I can put on the wing. If you look back a couple years ago, I put my little mount on the wing of the uh, my other um, Piper Cub. I'm gonna take that one and I'll modify it so that that can also work on the yellow one. So I'll get I'll get that one. The video camera strapped to the yellow one tomorrow and so we'll do a uh do a flight or two with that um i don't know if i'll bring both cubs up if i do um i will be looking for uh someone if they if they excuse me if they want to try and and i can trust them uh to fly the other piper cub i want to have both of my cubs up video flying to formation so we'll see what happens there if not tomorrow it'll be somewhere down the line um yeah so that's about it. So we're good to go. Uh, let's get this place cleaned up and uh, probably won't be next week. It might be the week after that, but I will start uh, uh, putting together that uh, Warlock 40. So hopefully everyone will want to watch the uh, watch the build of that little monster. So I still haven't just completely decided uh, if I wanted to go with, uh, with Glow a little gas motor I could use a little gas motor on that one uh, or just go electric I still might just be going electric I've just got to I've stopped away the options but the uh, as of right now the retracts are pretty much in I'm gonna do the retract so uh, I will see you guys very soon back down here in the shop